hot bayonetta action. And Abadongo, of course, one of the jack of all trades from Team Japan. We're gonna get right into it. Looks like Smashville is gonna be the start of the set. Go ahead, you're gonna see Abadongo already starting off by throwing out those Nair planes, trying to get a little chip damage with those bullet arts, but not too successful. Yeah, patience is gonna be the name of the game here. You know that both of these players are gonna wanna just try and hold the ledge, control the platform, make sure they have all the space in the world to move around. As long as they've got shoulder room, they can assert so much pressure. Wow, he went to, goes into the immediate air dodge there. So you see Abdongo actually go for the up tilt and just completely whisk because of that uh, invincibility frames that he has extended from the wish time. And Jack will try to take the most of the situation, keep the damage at an even. I feel like these early trades are gonna be a pivotal factor to whoever can take the advantage in this set just because they're gonna be going tit for tat so often. Yeah, especially as Sonic and Lumbi are able to build that leeway. Hold the phone for a second. Abdong is going to get a little bit of a string to the top. Isn't going to kill him, but gets a good chunk of damage. But you're looking at the percents now, and it's still roughly even. Now, I feel like we're going to be seeing this often. Jackal coming from a very Bayonetta-heavy region where you need to know how to survive these combos. And you know that Jackal is going to be ready for whatever Abadargo has to throw at him. Being able to turn a reversal is going to be so important. And utilizing Rage with Sonic is going to be an excellent way to turn the tables. Yeah, and just like that, Abadargo was able to close out the stock. I don't even know if Jackal could have magnet-handed from that far away, but you know what Abadargo said? I'm going to make sure you don't come back, hits him with the back and cleans up that first stock. Yeah. So close yet so far. Abadango is going to try to take the most of this lead. However, I feel like at no point is this really going to be a safe set for Abadango mm -hmm. or even Jackal if he manages to take the advantage because these players are going to be hunting for these opportunities to turn it around. There we go. This hits a hard knockdown, goes right into the spin dash. And he uses spring to get out of there, but gets actually caught in the air by the witch twist. Abadango getting another conversion, slowly but surely building a strong lead for himself. Feels like reading the air dodge is going to go right in for a grab. A little bit of damage with the bullet climax and just sort of picking around at him. Doesn't look like Abba can really get a lead on where Jackal's going to be. Jackal doing a fantastic job of staying evasive. He goes, runs right to center stage, tries to get that positioning, and runs forward the moment he sees those bullet arts. He's like, all right, I'm going to punch you for that one. Goes ahead and gets a little bit of a ding with the spring right there. Tries to let the punch rip, but it's still not going to connect there. Still looking for some way to kill Abadongo. That interaction on the ledge was a fantastic showing of why Jackal is one of New Jersey's shining stars. You saw how, even though he was on the opposite side of the stage, he was keeping the spacing of that future interaction in mind. He has such a fine idea of how to try and avoid where Bayonetta is going to be, but Abadango is a step ahead of him trying to occupy all that space, like smothering where Jackal can be. He's going to let him take that game one. Yeah, you can even see Jackal thinking a little bit about what he wants to do for his counter pick and maybe even his character. can go ahead and stick with the Sonic. We see him press start instantly. He's going to take him. I think that was still Smashville for It for looked a like it. That back. was a pretty yeah. quick stage select. Actually, given the music, yeah, I think this city. is Talent City. Yeah, it is. All right, okay, so. there you go. It's hard to see from, from our distance, right? Yeah, but nonetheless, really good stage break. I feel like this is the quintessential Sonic versus mm. Bayonetta stage. We see this matchup so much in top level Smash 4 play. And there's a good reason why the platform layouts and the lack of platforms later on in the stage provide such a dynamic view of what these characters can do, how they can move around, where and how they can dictate the, the pace of a match. Right, and especially for someone like Sonic, you get someone on those platforms, they're going for a spring ride, baby. So you want to make sure that you're on top of your game. Oh, and you know Jackal's hunting. He's got one in his mouth. He's ready to try to turn this around on Abba. It's really just finding that opportunity. And we've seen that Abadango throughout his entirety of play here in New York. He has been tenacious with how he's just been able to turn situations into his favor and completely lock out how his opponent can try to turn a reversal or take advantage of any time that he whiffs something and misspaces something. Yeah, and we're looking at it this time, right? The game's starting off more or less the same way. They both are fairly close in percent. But this is where we saw Abba lap Jack last time around. And because of convergence like these, he's getting these afterburner kicks converting into all this damage. You might get one here. No, still, Jackal's DI has been immaculate out of getting escaping those combos. Bro, with all these drop combos, it's looking like Witch Twist City. Mm -hmm. I really don't see where Abba is going to be able to turn these regular bread and butters into confirmed stocks. He's going to have to think outside the box if he wants to turn these stocks on Jackal, because right now, all that damage is building up between the two of them. Abba really can't afford to take on much more damage in these interactions. Yeah, and we're getting to a point where, oh my goodness, the evasion from Jackal quickly getting out of that scenario from the God Fist. But Jackal's getting to a point where he's building up a lot of rage. He's putting Abadongo in a situation where sooner or later, one clean hit will be enough. That might have been it right there. Who knows? Just a little bit of a spacing. It looked like he tried to go for the neutral air into the kill, but it wasn't a follow uh, good follow-up. 
Excellent DI is going to be keeping Jackal alive at this. He's sitting at max rage, but it's not really going to matter. Abadango is going to be taking it at the ledge. Phenomenal ledge play. Yeah, we've seen him go for that several times there. When you see Jackal trying to recover. Oh, oh, wait, oh no. no. Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> He's holding on to dear life right there. Learn how to wiggle that stick, folks. Yeah, wiggle that stick. Keep oh. it alive and take advantage. Just like that, Jackal bringing it back. And now we have the pseudo final destination portion of this stage. Great opportunity for Jackal to bring up the percentage, sort of tie things up, maybe even take the lead here. When there's no platforms there, all of a sudden things turn to Sonic's favor. He's able to establish such a strong juggle condition. And even though the ledge play for Bayonetta is still near insurmountable in certain situations, when Bayonetta can't land is when you can take advantage of her the most. Yeah, and you can see that Jackal's doing an immaculate job of also using just his Sonic fundamentals, right? Like, if you're going to be a Sonic player, you have to make sure you know when to go in a shield out of your spin dash to mix up your opponent with your approach. He's doing a great job of catching Abdango guessing. Interesting Mitch twist onto the platform from Abadango. I'm not sure why he opted to take the high ground in the situation. And I feel like being on level ground with Jackal is how Abadango's been able to take advantage of every time Jackal misses one of his confirms or missteps the right, uh, in the wrong way. Whenever we see Abadango, go ahead and try to get some nares. Gonna miss that up tilt, but just smashes that witch twist out immediately. He needs one more up air. Can't find it though. The DI from Jackal getting him out of that once again. Almost caught out, but still not wait. Oh! Goes for a quick one. I feel like this is the same situation we were finding ourselves in stock one on both of these players, where the percentage is just building itself up, the pressure builds on both of these players, because now time is coming in for both of them. Jackal trying to come in from out deep, Abba holding the ledge, doing a fantastic job of it. They are just barely clipping, but he's not going to be able to get the successful kill. Oh, he's going to catch the jump from ledge, and that will actually seal out that game two for Abdongo one more time. This time, Jackal a lot closer to getting that dub. Just needed, you know, one or two micro interactions could have spelled a different story entirely. Definitely. As far as the macro game is concerned, it seems like Jackal, he has the game plan. He knows what he needs to do. It's just a matter of finding the counterplay in these little interactions with Abadango that are going to allow him to really turn the tide. I love the run back to town and city because the stage really did benefit Jackal. When it came to the ledge play, this was Abba's town. This was a stomping ground. But when it came to controlling center stage, dictating where the match was taking place, and even really taking advantage of during the uh, scene transition, that's where Jackal was starting to really lay it down. See Jackson go ahead and get that grab into the back air. So that's a good amount of percent racked up. Already gonna get another grab to the nair this time. So Jackal doing a good job of realizing that Abadango's holding shield quite a bit and just going for convergence. But Abadango talks to him so quickly. We're trying to make him sing. Look at this. Jackal is responding in turn. Smooth pivot credit. It's going to tie up the percentage, but that doesn't mean anything against Bayonetta. Abadango has been so confident in being able to just respond to how Jackal is moving. And you also have to recognize that it's been a little bit of some time before Abadong has thrown out that wish time successfully, right? Like, we've right. seen a few. Jack would just punish one with, I believe, a dash attack. But still getting to that point where it's just one crucial misstep is all it takes for Abadong to convert this into a stop. Coming in high, he's going to get caught on the landing. A couple of afterburner kicks, but no dice. Jackal trying to make it back to the stage once again. We've seen phenomenal ledge play from Abdongo all set. This time, looks like Jackal's actually going to recover high. Gets it's tired of getting nared every time he tries to go low, but this time he's going to have to play the game one more time. Makes it to the edge. Sent off stage once again. And once again, nailing the stock on the ledge. It seems even in this set, Abdongo's making these adaptations to Jackal's play. <laughs> and then we so saw there's only that. so much you can do. Look at that. Mm. And just like that, we're sitting at the single stocks. Things are so close between these two players. This can turn the match completely Jackal turns this around because how many adaptations can you make in this situation? Oh my oh. goodness, magnifying glass combo. Somehow Jackal's still alive. Uh, didn't have a lot of percent racked up, but Abdong just keeping the pressure going and now has quite a bit of deficit percent wise, but still has a lot of game to be played. Coast to coast pressure. Abadong is really <laughs> laying it on this. He really does not want Jackal to have the opportunity to turn this around. He's starting to see like, he needs to start putting himself in positions where he controls center stage, gets to ledge right away. He cannot let Jackal have any space to himself. Right, and you've seen that. Oh, wait, hold on. Is that going to be fair? No, he actually does not uh, get the connection off of that. So we're going to see Jackal run back in. But another witch twist. Jeez, Abdongo is just keeping the pressure consistently. That back air will not be enough, but I'm sure one more will, and that'll be Give it. Give him another. And just like that, a solid 3-0 for Abadango. Jackal really did bring it close, but... 
that's just the level of talent that we're bringing to the table. Yeah, Jackal definitely held it down uh, very convincingly. Like it was a 3-0, right? No one yep. can deny that Abadango did uh, play consistently better in the situations that mattered the most. Right. But that definitely was a much closer match than the Smash GG tournament results will, will make it seem, right? Right. Um, but who knows? We also saw two games of that were on Town City. Who knows how he would have done on maps that weren't his counterpick. Right. But that's just kind of up to speculation, and that's why we're here, right? So. Absolutely.